Hello, this is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Okay, so as you probably know, the Scotch game starts with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then the immediate strike in the centre with d4. The Scotch game is a very, very good opening uh, for white. Uh, if you look at the Lee Chess Community database, you know, white does actually very well with this opening. Now I don't play the Scotch game, but because I am, I do respond with e5, uh, I will sometimes play against the Scotch game. And from this position, you know, there's usually a, a fairly sort of number of uh, standard moves. So pawn captures uh, pawn, knight now captures the pawn back. And, you know, if you play the bishop, which is sort of the classical variation, I have historically have just done badly. I think, in fact, the opponent wins about 60% of the time out of about 19 games. And so recently I've been super enthusiastic about the Steinitz uh, variation. So the queen to h4 on move four. Now, the Steinitz variation is named after Wilhelm Steinitz, uh, who is the first official world chess champion and sort of known in his sort of early career with his sort of super aggressive uh, romantic style of play. So big attacks, attack at any cost. And this is what the Steinitz variation in the Scotch uh, is like. It's a, an aggressive move. And, and you know, I got to play this again today, and this is now makes it five wins out of five games now, against people who play the Scotch. So this is a really interesting opening because I don't even know the theory. I certainly didn't know the theory that well at the beginning, but I have now won five out of five games compared to, as I said before, the classical variation where I basically lose 60% of the time. Uh, now let's have a look at what can happen uh, in this game. Now, quick look at just the uh, just the um, sort of review, and sort of in the review, as you can see, you know, almost ninety one percent accuracy again without knowing a lot of theory, uh, and you can see this catastrophic drop for the opponent. So this is an opening where white, uh, the Scotch player, will see infrequently. I think it's less than three percent of Scotch games, and they are very likely to make a fairly catastrophic mistake. Now back to the analysis. Um, now obviously the, um, the you know, for uh, I think more beginners, um, the risk is, you know, they could potentially play something like pawn to g3, you know, trying to attack the, the, um, the queen, and that is losing immediately. Because what the queen, of course, is attacking is attacking that pawn, and of course that comes with check, uh, and, you know, that yeah, that rook is lost. So, uh, so that is a sort of very obvious sort of trap. But you probably won't get a uh, sort of more intermediate player play that sort of obvious sort of error. I think people, by the time they're sort of in the sort of 1100s, 1200s, they sort of recognise that that sort of pattern is bad. But nonetheless, the queen is attacking that pawn. Um, the you know the opponent can't block with that pawn because of course that pawn is pinned to the king, and Typically, uh, in fact, the most common response here is that the opponent will defend with developing their knight, which is what my opponent did in this game. Uh, and here, the, the, the most logical move for black is to immediately pin that knight uh, to the king, developing another bishop, so bishop to b4. And here we enter the modern defense. Uh, and at this point, white only has one good move, and that move is bishop to, um, to e2. But this is a bit obscure, because what this move is actually trying to do is baiting black to take that pawn, uh, and now it looks like that's hanging. Um, here, it's important for, uh, for, uh, for white to sort of move their knight to b5, which of course comes with a potential attack here. And if black gets greedy uh, and gobbles, then you've got this stunning move, which, you know, attacks the queen, also x-ray defense of that rook. Um, the queen is forced to sort of move out of the way and in the wrong position to defend, you know, the counter-attack by white. So that is why in this position, the best move is bishop e 
too. How, um, however, this occurs uncommonly. And in fact, from the beginning of the Steinitz variation, white only finds this move in sort of community games, uh, so lower rated community games, in 3% of the time, which means they probably won't find it. And apart from this move, this is the only move where white maintains their advantage. Um, the next best move, I think, is uh, bishop to d3, and that's equal between white and black. Uh, and any other move, black now has the advantage. So this is, I think, why it's such a good setup, the Steinitz variation uh, in sort of beginner intermediate games. Now, so what happened in this game? Now, in this game, um, I think sort of white sort of made sort of a, a probably a heuristic type move, queen to f3, and that's an immediate mistake because now I can capture the knight um, Basically, uh, it's, it's hanging, and it also comes with an attack on the queen. So serious mistake, uh, minus four already. So captures, uh, and you know, the opponent is already in some trouble. So opponent then sort of, sort of moves to queen d3, which is the best move. Uh, here, defend that knight with, uh, with c5. Um, they develop sort of bishop d2, trying to unpin that knight which I suppose makes a bit of sense. Uh, here, I develop my other knight, so with sort of an attack there. So bringing out my pieces, development is important. Opponent sort of long castles, trying to get the king out of there, but that's, you know, that's good. Uh, that's good for them, but I've still got this minus four and a half advantage. Next, queen captures that pawn. So, you know, Stockfish wanted me to sort of uh, to castle here, but, you know, still very, very winning uh, for black. And I thought here I would have some potential chances. Uh, they move e5, which uh, which I suppose makes sense. Uh, here I move my knight out of the way and also potentially bringing my knight uh, into a potential attack as well. And here, you know, I sort of had some ideas, you know, you know, what am I going to do exactly? You know, potentially that comes with a check, that comes with a check, but nothing is exactly working at the moment. You know, that comes with an attack on the queen, but you know, doesn't, doesn't exactly work at the moment, but you know, a very, very tricky setup. Now the opponent now plays knight e4, which is a pretty good move. And the thing that I have to watch out for is knight to d6 and also potentially to um, to f6 comes with check. So they could potentially win a tempo move, and particularly with that move, I um, that square is basically undefended. So I do need to be careful with that. So here, what did I do? Firstly, bishop captures bishop, so now there's a uh, there's a sort of a check. So basically just liquidate that first. They capture uh, queen to e1 with check. Uh, and have to admit, I wasn't entirely sure what was the best move here. So obviously that's forced. Um, I thought, you know, bring the queen now into that position with a check, inviting a trade. I thought that would potentially be very good if they accept it because that comes with a fork of the bishop and rook. However, the opponent doesn't uh, doesn't accept. I sort of consider, you know, capturing is that good? And I think that was probably fine, but I didn't want to lose my queen just yet. So I played knight f uh, five and the idea behind that behind that move is firstly I give a second defender for the queen, uh, which means that potentially now I can move one of these knights out of the way with the queen still defended, and importantly this knight now also defends that square, so uh, so that check will no longer come with any venom. So I thought that was a pretty good move. Stockfish reckon queen takes queen was better, but you know reasonably similar in evaluation. They decide to sort of liquidate queens, and I thought that was fine. So now I capture with that knight. Um, you know, I still wanted to protect that square. Um, yeah, interesting, Stockfish thought the other one was better, but you know, not too dissimilar. And this, of course, now comes with an attack on the bishop as well. Um, they move sort of the, the sort of the knight out of the way. I take the bishop, no reason not to. Uh, and now you know, attack. That's fine move the knight out of the way, and you know, the trickiness of the knight, every move comes with a, with a subsequent attack. Another move, another attack. Uh, and so each step winning some tempo, and now I grab that pawn. That's potentially good, but you know, I can defend against that. Um, you know, I thought either of those was potentially fine. They sort of try to get a second attacker, another pawn. 
um, that move, and now short castles, king defends, and basically we've sort of now entered really an end game where I've got two minor pieces, your opponent only has a knight, and I still have both my rooks. So it's a matter of not stuffing something up, but I should be able to win this end game. So what happened? They decide to capture, so that's not good for them, losing their piece. I capture back, opening up now that uh, that file for my rook. Um, yep, so you know to avoid sort of a check, they move a pawn, that's potentially okay. I now sort of um, move my bishop out of the way, connecting the two rooks together. Uh, they sort of want to, I think, uh, defend against sort of infiltration into the second rank, which makes a lot of sense. Now I put my, uh, bring my rook up, uh, allowing uh, to double up my rooks into a battery. Um, they sort of move their, uh, their, uh, sort of move their pawn, potentially sort of defending uh, against, you know, me here forcing a trade. You know, that's also attacked by the bishop, so that was, I think, that was a pretty good move. But now, rook in a battery, uh, and I should be basically able to force some trade. So, here we go. Are we going to trade? They move out of the way. That's fine. Here, attack that pawn. Uh, they sort of decide to move their uh, their rook out of the way. I'm not too sure that actually achieves a lot for them. Here, happy to take with the rook. Are you going to trade? Uh, they decide to move out of the way here, but that's not really under threat because the, diff, uh, the bishop defends. And now, battery facing uh, the king. Oh, no, no, that's right. I decided to try to do a, a rook trade first. Uh, they move out of the way. That's fine. So now, put into battery. So basically, you know, the opponent has a problem. They attack. That's fine. That, of course, comes with check. So check, that comes with check, king forward. And here I thought, you know, I could go here, but let's play spicy. Um, you know, I'm still thinking I'll be happy to trade. Um, to, you know, I'm happy to lose a potential piece. I'm up a full piece, lose a pawn, but get rid of one of their rooks, super winning. So comes with check, they decide to move their king uh, to, uh, to c3 instead. And that's a critical error because now it's a mate in two. So this rook, of course, controls this whole file, uh, as this is whole sort of uh, uh, rank, sorry, uh, and also no, that is protected, that pawn captures that square, that pawn, that square, bishop here and here, and that pawn here, so basically the king only has along this rank to move, so with rook here, check, they must block, and then checkmate. Good game, GG. The Steinitz variation line is just super winning against the Scotch game. I hope you enjoy this video and thanks for watching.